Hi, I'm Liz Camfjord with the Penguin Random House Library Marketing, and I'm here to tell you about three outstanding nonfiction books um, publishing in spring of 2023, beginning with There Will Be Fire by Rory Carroll. This is a race against the clock narrative taking readers to October 12th, 1984 at 2.54 a.m. when a bomb planted by the Irish Republican Army exploded at the Grand Hotel in Brighton, England. It was the last day of the Conservative Party conference there and five people were killed. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher was in her suite at the time preparing her keynote address. Had she been just a few feet in another direction, she would have been killed. This is the first nonfiction book to focus on the Brighton bombing. It's perfect for fans of Patrick Braden Keefe's Say Nothing, where the bombing is mentioned only briefly. Uh, Rory Carroll, our author, is a veteran journalist for The Guardian based in his native Dublin. He remembers listening to news of the bombing when he was 12 years old. His interviews for the book include the convicted bomber, Patty McGee, who wrote a memoir. In his compelling letter to readers at the front of the book, Rory writes, with Margaret Thatcher as polarizing in death as in life, and Sinn Féin, once the IRA's political wing, now a respectable party of government, the IRA plot to kill its greatest foe is in danger of becoming myth. It is vital to remember what actually happened. And then we have Poverty by America by Matthew Desmond. Here, Pulitzer Prize winning author of Evicted gives us a startling expose on poverty, asking why the United States, the richest country on earth, has more poverty than any other advanced democracy. In this landmark book, Desmond draws on history, research, and original reporting to show that affluent Americans knowingly and unknowingly work to keep poor people poor. The well-off exploit the poor, driving down their wages while forcing them to overpay for housing and access to cash and credit. And we stockpile opportunity in exclusive communities, creating zones of concentrated riches alongside zones of concentrated despair. This is a compassionate book giving us as readers new ways of thinking about a morally urgent problem. Desmond calls for a new anti-poverty movement, providing concrete solutions and gently leading us to ask, how can I live a moral life amidst all this poverty and how can I help to end it? This is important reading for all Americans and will appeal especially to readers of Barbara Ehrenreich and fans of the memoir and its TV adaptation, The Maid. And lastly for me, The Wager by David Gran. Uh, David is the author of the phenomenal um, best-selling uh, book, Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, the Wager is a story of shipwreck culminating in a court-martial. Um, it takes us to January 28th, 1742, when a ramshackle vessel washed up on the coast of Brazil with 30 emaciated men, barely alive. They had an extraordinary tale to tell. They were survivors of His Majesty's ship, The Wager, which was a British vessel that had left England two years earlier during a war with Spain. It had wrecked on a desolate island off of Patagonia, and after being marooned for months and facing starvation, they built the flimsy craft, sailed for more than 100 days over stormy seas, and they were greeted as heroes. But six months later, an even more decrepit craft landed on the coast of Chile with three castaways. They told a different story. The 30 sailors who had landed in Brazil were not heroes. They were in fact mutineers. It became clear that while stranded on the island, the crew had fallen into anarchy and whomever the court found guilty could hang. This is told with the pacing of a thriller. It rivals the maritime fiction of Patrick O'Brien and survival classics like The Endurance. Uh, Grand spent months in the Royal Navy archives and discovered quite the cast of characters, including Lord Byron's grandfather, who was a midshipman. He he wrote of the crew that it consisted of highwaymen, burglars, adulterers, imposters, parasites, etc. This is an ideal book for readers of Eric Larson, Candace Millard, and Ian Fraser. Thank you so much for your attention. 